Pierre Cardin was an Italian-born naturalized French fashion designer. He is known for what were his avant-garde style and space-age designs. He preferred geometric shapes and motifs, often ignoring the female form. He advanced into unisex fashions, sometimes experimental, and not always practical. He founded his fashion house in 1950 and introduced the bubble dress in 1954. Cardin was born near Treviso in northern Italy, the son of Maria Montagnier and Alessandro Cardin. His parents were wealthy landowners, but to escape fascism they left Italy and settled in France in 1924. His father was a wine merchant. His father wanted him to study architecture, but he was interested in dressmaking from an early age. Cardin was educated in central France. Beginning his career early, at age 14 he worked as a clothier's apprentice, learning the basics of fashion design and construction. In 1939, he left home to work for a tailor in Vichy, where he began making suits for women. During World War II, he worked for the Red Cross, launching humanitarian interests that continued throughout his life. Cardin moved to Paris in 1945. There, he studied architecture and worked with the fashion house of Paquin after World War II. He worked with Alsace Chiaparelli until he became head of Christian Dior's Tire Atelier in 1947, but was denied work at Balenciaga. Cardin founded his own fashion house in 1950. His career was launched when he designed about 30 of the costumes for the party of the century, a masquerade ball at Palazzo Labia in Venice on 3rd of September 1951, hosted by the palazzo's owner, Carlos de Bestchi. He inaugurated his haute couture output in 1953. In 1954, he introduced the bubble dress, which is a short-skirted, bubble-shaped dress made by bias cutting over a stiffened base. He was the first couturier to turn to Japan as a high fashion market when he traveled there in 1959. That same year, he was expelled from the Chambre Syndicale for launching a ready-to-wear collection for the Printot department store as the first couturier in Paris to do as such, but was soon reinstated. During the 1960s, Cardin began a practice that is now commonplace by creating the system of licenses that he was to apply to fashion. A clothing collection launched around this period surprised all by displaying the designer's logo on the garments for the first time. As haute couture began to decline, ready-to-wear sort as well as Cardin's designs. He was the first to combine the mini and the maxi skirts of the 1970s. He introduced a new hemline that had long pom-pom panels or fringes that swayed as the body moved. Beginning in the 1970s, Cardin set another new trend, mod chic. This trend holds true for the form or for a combination of forms which did not exist at the time. He was the first to combine extremely short and ankle-length pieces. He made dresses with slits and batwing sleeves with novel dimensions, and mixed circular movement and gypsy skirts with structured tops. These creations allowed for the geometric shapes that captivated him to be contrasted, with both circular and straight lines. Cardin became an icon for starting this popular fashion movement of the early 1970s. Inspired by space travel and exploration, Cardin visited National Aeronautics and Space Administration in 1970, where he tried on the original spacesuit worn by the first human to set foot on the moon, Neil Armstrong. Cardin loved the spacesuit so much, he created his own design for National Aeronautics and Space Administration in 1970. In 1971, Cardin redesigned the Barong Tagalog, a national costume of the Philippines, by opening the front, removing the cuffs that needed cufflinks, flaring the sleeves, and minimizing the embroidery. It was also tapered to the body, in contrast with the traditional loose-fitting design, and it also had a thicker collar with sharp and pointed cuffs. A straight-cut design was favored by President Ferdinand Marcos. In 1975, Cardin opened his first furniture boutique on the Rue du Faubourg Saint Honoré. His furniture designs were highly inspired by his fashion designs. In both 1977 and 1979, he was awarded the Cartier Golden Thimble by French Haute Couture for the most creative collection of the season. He was a member of the Chambre Syndicale de la Haute Couture et du Prêt-à-Porter from 1953 to 1993. Like many other designers today, Cardin decided in 1994 to show his collection only to a small circle of selected clients and journalists. After a break of 15 years, he showed a new collection to a group of 150 journalists at his bubble home in Cannes. A biography titled Pierre Cardin, His Fabulous Destiny was written by Zylvana Lawrence. Pierre Cardin used his name as a brand, initially a prestigious fashion brand, then in the 1960s extended successfully into perfumes and cosmetics. 
an article in the Harvard Business Review commented that the extension into perfumes and cosmetics was successful as the premium nature of the Pierre Cardin brand transferred well into these new, adjacent categories, but that the owners of the brand mistakenly attributed this to the brand's strength rather than to its fit with the new product categories. In 2011, Cardin tried to sell his business, valuing it at 1 billion euro, although the Wall Street Journal considered it to be worth about a fifth of that amount. Ultimately he did not sell the brand. Carden entered industrial design by developing 13 basic design themes that would be applied to various products, each consistently recognizable and carrying his name and logo. The business initiatives included a contract with American Motors Corporation. Following the success of the Aldo Gucci-designed Hornet Sportabout station wagon interiors, the automaker incorporated Carden's theme on the AMC Javelin starting in mid-1972. This was one of the first American cars to offer a special trim package created by a famous French fashion designer. It was daring and outlandish design with some of the wildest fabrics and patterns ever seen in any American car. The original sales estimate by AMC was for 2,500 haute couture pony and muscle cars. The special interior option was continued on the 1973 model year Javelins. During the two model years, a total of 4,152 AMC Javelins received this bold mirrored, multicolored pleated stripe pattern in tones of Chinese red, plum, white, and silver that were set against a black background. The Carden Javelins also came with the designer's emblems on the front fenders and had a limited selection of exterior colors to coordinate with the special interiors. However, 12 Carden optioned cars were special ordered in midnight black paint. Continuously fascinated by geometric shapes, Carden purchased the Palais Boulnier Can in 1991. The house was designed by the architect Ani Lovig, and Carden furnished the bubble house with his original creations. The curves of the bubble house extend over 1,200 square meters and contain 10 bedrooms decorated by contemporary artists, as well as a panoramic living room. Carden bought Maxim's restaurants in 1981 and soon opened branches in New York, London, and Beijing. During the 1980s and until the mid-1990s, he supported a French press organization for music law, circus, dance, and the arts. In 2001, Carden purchased the ruins of the castle in Lacoste, Vaucluse that was once inhabited by the Marquis de Sade, he partially renovated the site and held music or dance festivals there. Carden owned a palazzo in Venice named C.A. Brigadin. He was designated a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador in 1991 and a United Nations Foul Goodwill Ambassador in 2009. Apparently Carden was mostly gay, but in the 1960s he had a four-year affair with actress Jean Moreau. His long-term business partner and life partner was fellow French fashion designer André Oliver, who died in 1993. Carden died on 29 December 2020, at the American Hospital of Paris, in Neuilly-sur-Seine, at the age of 98.